Okay, so what's going on here? Well, we have this home, and the value of this home is $250,000. And over time, this home went up to $300,000. So that particular homeowner is pretty happy about that. They're saying, yes, awesome, my home went up. But how much did uh, that person's home go up? What was the percent of increase in the value of their home? That is the uh, kind of focus of this particular video. Now, percent is probably one of the most important practical math skills that everybody needs to understand. And percent of increase and percent of decrease are typical type of percent problems that we have to figure out. Now, there's formulas for this, uh, but I like to kind of explain things where you don't have to, you know, uh, remember a formula. But just, you know, if you really truly understand percent, you can kind of just use common sense and reason through this. But if you think you could do this problem, put your answer into the comment section and don't feel uh, bad about using a calculator. Remember, a calculator is simply a tool, but we, uh, what you don't want to do is just guess. Okay, so if you happen to get the right answer, uh, but you weren't quite sure, well, I'm going to go through and explain this thoroughly. Matter of fact, I'm going to show you the right answer here in a second, and then we'll go through the solution to this problem. But uh, before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades, and I'm telling you right now, you could be successful in mathematics, and I'm especially uh, speaking to those of you that struggle in math. Maybe you've failed a lot of math courses. Maybe you hate math. Listen, okay, it doesn't always have to be that way. You could be successful. I've been teaching math for decades, so I'm not just making this stuff up, but what you need is great math instruction, very clear, understandable, and comprehensive. So if you're at the middle uh, middle school, high school, or college level in terms of mathematics, check out my math help program. You can find the link to it in the description of this video. I promise it will help you out big time. Also, if you happen to be uh, preparing for some sort of special test that has math on it, things like the GED, SAT, ACT, ASVAB, maybe a teacher certification exam, I have a ton of test prep courses that can help you out. If you homeschool, check out my middle and high school math program for homeschoolers. Won a lot of awards this year with uh, that particular program. If you need some math notes, well, I'll leave links to my notes in the description of this video, which are very uh, comprehensive and detailed, but you need to learn how to take your own awesome math notes. That's really, really important to be successful in mathematics. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and show you the answer right now, and let's go ahead and get to it uh, uh, right now here okay so here we go so we have this home it went up to three hundred thousand uh that's a 20 percent increase in value okay so you bought the home and let's say uh one year later it went up to 20 percent uh, in value so if you bought it for two hundred fifty thousand and it went up 20 percent your value of your home is three hundred thousand dollars so that's pretty awesome but what's even more awesome if, is uh, if you got this right, that's pretty cool. That means that you understand percent pretty well. And I'm going to give you a nice little happy face and A+, plus, a 100%, and a few stars so you can have an extra special day. Nice job. Okay, so let's go ahead and just kind of reason through this. There is a percent of increase formulas, percent of decrease formulas, but let's just use some common sense here. Okay, so before I show you the... Um, the work. What happened here, mathematically speaking? Well, there was an increase in value, obviously, but how much was the increase? Well, the increase is $50,000, right? So this house went up $50,000. So we want to consider this uh, increase, this amount that it went up, and we want to uh, express this in terms of percent. So how do I do that? Okay, with this $50,000, what do I need to compare from? Well, anytime you're thinking about something, um, the percent of increase or decrease, you always want to be uh, uh, referencing your starting point. Okay, this is our end point. We went up $50,000 here. So when we're trying to make a percent comparison, you have to compare it to that original amount, okay, not the end amount. So let's go ahead and get into the actual solution right now. Okay, so obviously, you know, if you uh, don't see that this is $50,000, let's go ahead and find the difference. So we're going to take that $300,000 and subtract away $250,000. That's $50,000. Now, if you went two fifty dollars minus $300,000, that's negative, right? You would end up with a negative $50,000. You could see this is a positive increase, so you want to find the absolute 
uh, value of that. It just means that, hey, you're going to, uh, the this increase is uh, positive, right? So the house increased a positive $50,000 that we kind of already uh, uh, talked about that. So the question is this, okay? $50,000 is what percent of 250000 okay? So remember, we always want to, um, when it comes to percent of increase and decrease problems, you always want to start from that original amount. How much did the original amount go up? So you're not thinking about the 300000 you're thinking about the 250000 your starting amount. How much from where you started from, what was the percent of increase? So really, this problem distills down to this. 50000 is what percent of 250000 So how do you uh, figure this out? Well, when you're trying to determine percent, a great way to think of um, what percent is, is a ratio between a part, uh, some part out of a whole, okay? Some part out of a whole. So this 50,000 would be the part, okay? How much is 50,000? That part out of the whole of 250,000, okay? So this is kind of the basic setup for figuring out these type of percent problems. By the way, if this particular problem is a little confusing for you, then you want to start working on more basic percent problems. Uh, a couple of uh, quick suggestions. One, I have a ton of percent problems on my U additional percent problems uh, on my YouTube channel. And I have two courses uh, that I would uh, look in my Math L program, my Math Foundations course and my Pre-Algebra course if I want to check out as well if you need to review basic mathematics. But here's the deal. We need to figure out 50,000 out of 250,000, and we need to express this as a percent. So let's suppose you were doing this without the aid of a calculator, right? Your teacher said, hey, you don't need a calculator. So the first thing you want to do is simplify this fraction. So when you reduce fractions and we have zeros, uh, you can cross cancel a zero for a zero. Okay, if you didn't know that, you could do that just like that. So this 50,000 out of 250,000 is really uh, the fraction five out of 25. So we got to figure out what five out of 25 is in terms of percent. And let's go ahead and look at that now. Okay, so five out of 25. And of course, I could reduce this down further, right, uh, as one fifth. And if you saw that, let's actually do that right now. So one fifth is these type of uh, is kind of a typical type fraction, like one half. If I asked you, one half is is how much in terms of percent? Well, if you said, oh, that's fifty percent, is the same thing as uh, the fraction one half. That's excellent. How about uh, one third? Okay. If you're like, oh, isn't that like thirty three percent? Yes, right? Or three-fourths. What would three-fourths be? Let's just do a little pop quiz here. If he said 75%, you're spot on. One-fifth is one of these basic fractions as well. So anyways, I wanted to cross-count these zeros. We have five uh, twenty-fifths or one-fifth, uh, but I'll just leave it as five twenty-fifths here, and you'll see uh, why here in a second. I'm going to leave it as five twenty-fifths. Okay, so you can go in your calculator. And take 5 divided by 25, you get 0.2. Or 1 divided by 5, you get 0.2. Or maybe you, did, you would just know that 1 fifth is equal to 20%. But if you didn't, you could simply just use a calculator. And now we have to be able to go from a decimal to a percent. So how do you go from a decimal to percent? Well, you multiply by 100. And that's effectively the same thing as moving the decimal point two places to the right. Okay, so if I move that point two right here, two places to the right, I'm going to end up with 20.0 uh, or 20.0 percent. So there you go. That is 20 percent. That is the percent of increase. Okay, so 50,000 is 20 percent of 250,000. But let's suppose um, uh, you didn't have a calculator and you didn't want to do this work and you didn't know that one fifth uh, was 0.2. How else could we do this? Well, if you understand the definition of percent, then this is a pretty easy problem as well. Okay, you could come at it this way. Percent by definition is a ratio. It's a fraction where the denominator is 100. It's where we compare a, uh, a number to 100. That is the technical definition of percent. So if I have this fraction, 5 over 25, and I say, you know what? If I multiply that 25 by 4, I'll get 100, okay? So uh, if I'm going to multiply the denominator by uh, 4, then i got to multiply the numerator by 4. So 5 times 4 is 20. Now I have a fraction, a number that I'm comparing 
to 100. So 20 is being compared to 100. Uh, so this is my percent. That's 20%. So a number being compared to 100, i.e. the denominator is uh, 100, that number, in fact, is uh, the percent. So that is 20%. So that's another way you could think about um, uh, you know, calculating the actual solution here. But again, there are formulas for the percent of increase and percent of decrease um, type of percent problems that you will face, you will definitely face uh, in mathematics. But I like to just kind of reason through this with common sense. But uh, anyways, percent is, absolute, is an absolute must, okay? Whether you are a math student or, or not, you definitely want to understand percent. And there's all sorts of uh, different flavors and varieties of uh, percent prompts. So just don't walk away from this and thinking, oh, I can do all uh, sorts of percent prompts. Well, you know, not so, you know, don't move so quickly on your conclusion. Challenge yourself, okay? There's all different types of percent prompts, as I stated. So if you want to know more about percent, um, just follow through with those suggestions that I stated earlier. But if this particular video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics uh, adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.